Hey guys, how's it going? Um, some stuff. Hmm. Here we go. Okay. Hey, Fori, how's it going? <laughs> Just getting this going here. All right, Facebook, if it would load. There we go. How you guys doing? <laughs> Facebook is being really slow today. Okay, and then one more thing. Okay, good to go, good to go. Yeah, it can show us what you can do with dynamics. I probably won't be doing any uh, dynamic stuff today because I'm just gonna try and finish this up. Um, but let's see. Yeah, I won't be I won't be doing a you know too much of that stuff just because I will be working on this character. But thank you so much. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I um I did take part in the beta, the uh, the ZBrush beta for the the class stuff, which was fantastic. Um, and I made a uh, I made a wizard, and it was a lot of fun. And I love 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 the thickness, the dynamic thickness stuff. That's my favorite part of this new update. And I, of course, I love the cloth stuff. Don't get me wrong. But um, any plans to add new modules to the workshop with ZBrush 20? Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to do that. For sure. I just don't know when, but I want to soon. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, auto group these. Mirror and weld. Whoa. What in the world? There we go. Oh my goodness. I don't know what <laughs> what just happened with that guy. Why mirror and weld is so crazy. I'm gonna see if I can duplicate this. How'd you do the beard for the wizard? Um I just did uh just my Mac the Mac on hairbrush. Um and then I used some cloth brush to to kind of drag it to the side. So, did I make a new user interface? I did. So if you go to my website, uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com and just, you can re-sign up again. It's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna send you double emails or anything like that. Um, but you can go there and grab my latest user interface and it has some new, uh, some new stuff. Mainly what I did is I, I mounted the dynamics menu over here to the side underneath the Z plugins menu. So um, you can have access to all the new dynamic stuff. And then um, I did some things like I added the split screen right here. I got rid of a couple camera settings um, and I didn't do too much to my menu uh, because all of all the stuff, the main, the main new stuff is in the dynamics menu. So I wanted to mount that. But um, what headphones? These are Sennheiser. I can't remember what model. They're just Sennheisers. Yeah. Yeah, I found a... Well, I found a bug. I think this is because I... I don't know if it's because I made this in a different version and I saved it and then opened it in here and tried to... Um, try to mirror it, but... Let me, let me see what's going on here. Okay. So I'm going to try and mirror it. Let's see, I'm basically um, trying to decide what to do with this. I want to, I'm going to stitch it together and then remesh it. And Neil is out today, so um, he's on a, a family vacation, so he's not going to be posting the links and stuff. 
So, <laughs> promise to do a tour on my office. Yeah, I need to. I need to wait for my new desk to come, and then I will. Uh, NLT, sure, I think, as long as it involves ZBrush. <laughs> but sure. Okay, let's let's try and see what's going on with this here. Um, I'm going to export this out as an OBJ and bring it back in. Let's see. Sometimes when a mesh kind of has an issue, like you just saw with my mirror and weld, to clean it up, sometimes it's, it's good to um, export it as an OBJ and bring it back in. So I'll just go to my desktop and save it. And then I can append a star. I'll go down to that star and then import that mesh back in. Okay, and it gets rid of all my poly groups, but it does clean it. It cleans it up. So let's see if, if it's true. So if I do a mirror and weld now, yep. So now I turned on dynamic and it's just fine. So let me undo that. Whoops, not that. Import. Okay, and then um, auto groups, then mirror and weld it. There we go. Okay, so that fixed it. So if you ever have any kind of mesh that's, that's doing weird stuff, uh, first thing to do is to restart ZBrush and see if it's a ZBrush thing. Second thing to do is export your objects either as an OBJ or an FBX and bring them back in that way. Um, there's also, you can do this uh, Make Poly Mesh 3D that will duplicate it off onto its own tool and then append it back in. Sometimes that'll work. So, yeah, that will work. Okay. All right, so let's get back to, let's delete these other ones that were causing us grief. And I just, um, I've been getting into mountain biking lately and I just barely w went on a, ro a mountain bike trip this morning. I rode like eight, eight miles this morning. So I'm kind of, I'm trying to try and catch my breath a little bit. <laughs> but it was a good ride. Okay, so that's this one, this one. I want to delete this one. Just cleaning my scene up a little bit. These are the eyes, the nose the body okay oh into the the forum you, you mean okay could you send me an email just send an email to uh, shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com and remind me and i'll just send you out a new invite invite Oh, thanks. Yeah. And I, I've put my, uh, I've, I adjusted my camera. It's now, sh it's now shooting in 4k. So, um, I, I had never done that before. So if I go full screen, you can see my, you can now see my stubble because it's pretty, uh, <laughs> it's shooting in 4, 4k. I don't know if my, let me know if my mouth sync is not up because I had to put some delay on it. But, uh, anyway, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jura. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's, um, I want to combine these pieces together. And then, let's see, I'm going to move this down. And I'm going to combine the head with the body. Sync is good? Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to save this as a new tool. called the stitch sort of sort of like stitch but not <laughs> we're on a top view cam you know i've actually thought about that i have a webcam right here in front of me and i would love to mount it above looking down at my tablet so you can see my hand kind of bob ross style right i've been thinking about that um i did have my camera kind of behind me shooting over the shoulder that was that was interesting um but I was, yeah, I'm just, I was kind of thinking about doing that. I need an, a better arm to hold the camera up. And uh, yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about doing that. Does Folygon do that? I'll have to check it out. Okay, so that's low, that's low. Merge down. 
Okay, so these should be merged now. <laughs> Tristan, thank you. Well, now I can hold up my I can hold up my toys and you can actually see them. Like this one. You can actually see it. Because it's high res, right? Can you see this better? Or like this Mickey Mouse? <laughs> you can see these better? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Hey David, how you how you doing? Any comments on the new 21 or 2021 ZBrush? Um get it, it's awesome. I love I love the dynamic cloth stuff. I love the dynamic stuff. Just it's just a lot of fun to play with. And uh I also love the the new dynamic thickness. Um and the nano mesh, the micro mesh that comes with the dynamic stuff is really nice to create chainmail. I created a character a while ago. Um his name is Sirloin. He has chainmail. And I went back in and, and messed with the micro mesh on the chainmail. And it was like, man, I wish I had that a little while ago. <laughs> so yeah, the new file system. So you're talking about saving as PNG, David, right? That's what you're talking about. So just so you guys know, you can save a file now as an image, just like you can in ZBrush Core Mini. Um, you can save a PNG and it will actually save it like it's a ZTL, which is amazing. I don't know how... What kind of witch witchcraft it's doing in with that so super cool okay the comments are missing from youtube oh the comments yeah i don't know why that's not working um hold on a second there we go okay thank you thank you i i selected the wrong screen thanks for that okay now they're back there we go Hello from Berlin. I have too many uh, scenes set up that I can switch through. So I, I'm glad you mentioned something because that also took away the, the ZBrush banner across the top. So um, do I have a flex arm? I have an ergo stand on, on the bottom of this. Yeah. And uh, so I just hope I'm getting a new desk and I hope the new desk, it'll, it'll fit on there. Because this desk, I, you guys can't see it, but this desk is actually bowing from all of the weight that I put on here. There's my... Cintiq and I have a widescreen monitor right here and my keyboard tray and it's all just heavy and it's just kind of going Ooh. The reason I it's Boeing is because I couldn't put the supports underneath it because I had to have a keyboard tray under there. So it was it was uh, Yeah um, Hannibal I like the ergo better because um, It if you're on an arm if you have your Cintiq on an arm you you still have to set it up against something Otherwise, it's going to shake while you uh, while you use your Cintiq. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense, but it'll kind of quake a little bit. Okay, hey, uh, uh, NLT, I just got your email. Thank you for that. I'll get I'll get to that after the stream. Okay, um, let me uh, let's let's stitch this together. No pun intended. Pun intended. Okay, uh, let's go to here. I'm going to save this one more time before I stitch them together. Okay. All right. Is it saving? Okay, saved. There we go. All right. Now let's uh, let's stitch this together using Remesh by Union. You can see all the stitching happening. Um, is that what I want? I think I want to go a higher resolution on the body parts. I'm going to undo that. And I'm actually going to split the, the body off from the head again and then subdivide it. So let's do split hidden to the body. And I'm actually going to apply this dynamic subdivisions and then Z remesh it at 5000. So we can get a better, more even topology so we can... Uh, so when we stitch things together, it's going to, it's going to have a better reaction or result. Okay. So see how these are, these are quads. And if you look at it before they're quads, but they're stretched and they're different resolutions. See how this hand is a, is a higher resolution than the body. So I kind of wanted to, uh, Z remesh them. So they're all the same. So you can see the quads are kind of all similar now. Okay. Oh, thanks 12 inch. And you like the new ruler project? Awesome, David. That's that's cool to hear. 
So basically with my ruler project, what I did with the 2021 ruler project, I essentially just popped the sphere up, up higher and made it smaller. And then I changed the, um, the export option to, to the scale of one instead of 100. So because I, I'm finding that more and more programs want it to be at a scale of one if you're using meters, um, but if you're using centimeters or something like that, you'll wanna change it to either 10 or 100. And I've had it at 100 for the longest time because Maya likes 100. So just be aware of that. If you get my ruler file now for 2021. Okay, so let's stitch this again. If I can do that, snap it. Okay, stitch it. Remesh by union again. There we go, better result. Okay, and then we need to accept this, and then I'm gonna Z, I'm gonna uh, merge it with the head, and then Z remesh that or uh, stitch that. So, hey Franco, uh, what did you make to have the reference image on the left? This is just a spotlight, so um, it's just using spotlight, and basically, 100% black will be alphaed out. So I took this into Photoshop, this drawing into Photoshop. And then I kick these blacks up to about 80%, 85% black. And then I filled the background with 100% black. And then I brought it into ZBrush via Spotlight and it knocked the background out. So Spotlight is this thing right here. Um, so that's all I did. Okay. Any tips for today? Tips like anything interesting? Something we can know which can help us in ZBrush? Um, um, I just try and give tips as I go. So hopefully you can, I'll come up with some as I go. But a uh, remesh by union is one. Okay, so now I need to, I, this has a whole bunch of triangles now and I want to remesh this. But I want to remesh it with the head so I can get this nice flow from the head to the neck. So I want to stitch those together. And I want to see see how the head is way more dense than the body. So I'm just going to add one subdivision level to the body and then delete lower. By the way, I'm listening to BT's brand new album. I just have to say it is amazing. It's called The Lost Art of Longing if you're into BT at all. So just giving a shout out to BT because he just barely released it and it's amazing. So just want to say that. Hey, Saeed, sure. Okay, so let's, uh, let's merge this down to the body. Okay, and now see, since I added one subdivision level, the densities are, are closer. So now when I stitch it, um, gosh, I keep hitting uh, my, my menu instead of, I keep forgetting stitch is underneath uh, the gizmo here. Okay, so I'm going to remesh by union with that, and that will stitch the head onto the neck. It will stitch the ears onto the head. And then hit accept, and we're good to go. Hey, what's up, Carlos? How you doing? Uh, Guantum, I do not anymore. I, I, usually, I don't use uh, Dynamesh hardly at all any longer. And the reason why is because we now have Sculptress Pro, and I like Sculptress Pro better. Never, never use it? Why not, Carlos? Or are you saying you, you have never used it? Okay, so let's fill that in and then we're gonna Z remesh this. I'm gonna duplicate it. Realistic Persian armor. Uh, that's out of my skill level. So the best advice I can give you is get as much reference as you possibly can get and then try and try and model what you see. Yep, stitching stitch. <laughs> okay, so let's do, uh, I'm gonna remesh this, but I want to keep these groups that I have here. I don't wanna lose them. So, oh, looks like we have a little rogue piece here too that got, that got stitched in there. So I'm gonna hide that. Oh, you don't know how to use that, Carlos? 
You know what? I'm just going to keep groups on and see what happens. And I'll just leave it. See that little piece? That's where the neck was sticking up through the mouth. So. Joseph, thank you very much. So you basic, so basically you increase subdivisions to add details, right? Uh, kind of, kind of. Um, I mean, that's one way to do it. So let me... I'm going to open up this. I love using the... Um, Oh, I don't have it installed yet. Dang it, that plugin. I need to install that that plugin. I forgot to do that. So I guess we'll just use regular Z Remesher with uh, Keep Groups turned on. So let's go to Geometry. Um, Carlos, it's really easy to use Remesh by Union. That's just a dif different way of stitching your model together without... The benefits are it only changes the model where two objects intersect. So... Um, that's that's where that's where it happens and it doesn't re it doesn't rebuild your entire model like dynamesh does so dynamesh will redo your entire thing and if your mouth if you have a character with its mouth closed it's going to stitch that mouth closed and things like that so is there an option that shows the amount of poly is dynameshing um well stitch by union is not dynameshing i don't i don't understand that that question there Okay, so let's go. Yeah, it depends on your poly. It, it depends on your overlapping objects. Yeah, yeah, David, I need to reinstall yours here. Do you have, is, is yours up to date to 2021 yet? I need to get that from you. And they are very important. <laughs> okay, so let's do um, Z Remesher, Keep Groups, Five, and Turn Symmetry Back On. Because Z Remesher respects symmetry. So there we go. Not bad. Okay, I can live with that. Yosef, I did say your name. And thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So now I'm just going to um, work on the blending of this here. Should we turn off spotlight projection? Can you show stitch by union again, please? Um, I don't have anything to stitch right now, but maybe. Hold on a second. So there we go. So remeshing will get rid of some of your creases, so you'll have to go back in and crease them again but it also allows you to like smooth stuff out. Hey, what's up, Chris? The, or at least the point, oh, sweet. Okay, probably the end of the week, awesome. I will look forward to that. Sorry, chat's kind of going fast today. Trying to keep up with it. I don't have my, my, uh, helper Neil to help me out today so I'm just smoothing out these transitions and then we can come in here and crease the ones that we want to keep with pinch brush and it didn't look like it gave me so I have two poles here so that's going to kind of work against me a little bit that's okay There we go. Carlos, what's that? Okay. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I wish this guy had some, well, I guess it's got eyelashes, so I can make these eyelashes with the new dynamic thickness, which is awesome. And then I need to do Sculptor's Pro on this nose. What's up, Kev? I think in Dynamesh, using Dynamesh Master for select amount of polygons. Uh, that's true. Yeah, Dynamesh Master, you can select. I usually leave it at default, though. The 1.5 million that it gives you is usually exactly the amount that you want. Oh, thanks, Yosef. Okay, I don't know if I'm saying your name properly. 
I apologize if I'm not. Okay, so let's pull these fingers out more. They're like little uh like duck duck fingers or something. <laughs> Want to make these arms a little wider, transition smoother. Okay, let's make his. Let's give him a tongue or her. I, I assume it's a her. Then we need to fix and make these toes and this one. I love how it's got a single toenail and the other two are like flappies, <laughs> like a raptor of some sort, I guess. Uh, let's see. Okay, tongue. It's just a sphere. How can I render a character so it looks realistic and less cartoony? I mean, texture and lighting plays a big part. In render engine as well, will Keyshot do this, which is the only one I have? Yes, it will. I mean, if you look at if you look at product shots in Keyshot, you'll definitely see realistic stuff, like real world realistic stuff. You know, um, let's split this off. And squish this down. <laughs> Sticking its tongue out. <clears throat> okay. 15 from Egypt. Ah, crazy. It's a good time to get started. And welcome from Egypt. Okay, let's see. Trying to decide how to make, how wide to make this tongue. And his eyeballs are sticking down into his mouth. You can see those, <laughs> those black shapes. Um, so Carlos, uh, to answer your question a little more, it it has to do realism has to do with proportions so realistic proportions realistic uh like make making sure that the eyes are you know the same size as a real person's eyes and <clears throat> and uh the and then the the biggest thing is the 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 detail and the texture work on the surface and the the detail and the sculptural work on the surface so if you watch uh Another streamer on here. His name is uh, Brendan Bankston. He uh, he he makes well. He works at Crystal Dynamics and he makes all the characters for that new Marvel or new yeah new Avengers game coming out. Um, and a lot of those are very realistic. I mean, they're still somewhat stylized, but if you notice in the detail, like the surface details and all that kind of stuff, they're very very high resolution details in the surfacing. And um, so you want to just kind of you know, add all that detail in the textures and the normal maps and that kind of stuff. You do UVs and texturing when needed in ZBrush or somewhere else. Um, and Carlos, are you the Carlos that's in my class? Or are you a different Carlos? Are you, are you in my workshop? Have I, are you the Carlos I met in New York once or a different one? <laughs> Just making sure. Cause you're asking questions, which I would think that the, the, Carlos that I know would know. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Okay. <clears throat> let's see. Ba, ba, ba. And let's do, let's do the, the teeth here. And I'm going to grab this color for the teeth. Whoops. Not. Better fill this body first. Okay. And when you're grabbing color, that's that's why I love to have the, um, the 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 reference up here is because I can color drop off of here, and I can I can pick any of these colors. But you have to have the ring showing, this ring right here that's part of uh, spotlight. As long as that's showing, then you can hit C. You can see the color see this color swatch right here. You can watch it change as I hover over the different colors. So you can see his tongue is changing as well because it's not filled with a color. So I might as well grab that red color and fill it. <clears throat> Let's do it. 
So Fane, oh thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I have a question regarding the new Z Modeler Extrude tool. Since I haven't used 2021 Modeler yet, did you try to retopologize anything complex with it? Is it good enough to not go to third-party software and do the job in ZBrush? It is good enough. Um, it just takes some getting used to. I have not, uh, I have not used it enough to be super comfortable with it yet. But as far as the it's it, the capabilities of it, it's it's yeah, it's totally capable, and you can do you can retopologize stuff in here with that new tool pretty easily. It's just honestly, it's just snap and it's just extrude edge and snap vertice. So you just have to have those things turned on, and you can just go to town. The thing that I love about it the most is it will automatically weld your points as you're going. As long as you kind of snap it close enough to the other points, it'll just keep welding. So, yeah. Oh, you are the Carlos? <laughs> You're just confirming? Since uh, I'm thinking on a project I'm working on. Um, yes. So, Carlos, if you, have if you are in the course, you have access to the uh, Sirloin content that's in the forum, go watch the last episode of that. Okay? When I, I'm actually... Uh, talking with Brendan Bankston about making high resolution surface in uh, substance painter. So if you want to ch go check that out, you'll see exactly how to do that kind of stuff. And it does take UVs for sure. Okay. So let's get on this some more. Um, sorry, I keep getting lost. I, I, I keep getting lost in chat, <laughs> which is good, but okay, let's grab this color and there we go. These, are, these two little teeth. These are these are teeth that are very, uh, very unique to like stitch characters, right? Single little teeth. Let's do local symmetry. Oh, awesome, canine. Awesome. Thank thank you so much. You messaged me on. Twitter? Yeah, I'm not on Twitter very much. Sorry about that. I have too many social media accounts everywhere. <laughs> so I only kind of pay attention to a few. Okay, so I'm going to pull his bottom lip, her bottom lip, out more. So I can clear the top lip with these teeth and have it make sense. Let's turn on topological range of three. How do we get the base of a 3D model while the model is not completely clear? I don't understand that question, Said. I'm sorry. How do you get the base of a 3D model while the model is not completely clear? Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I sorry about that. I can't, I don't understand what you're trying to ask with that one. I did. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. When I see them and I, I can reply, then I will. I need to split these off here. Okay. And then kind of bend them out. Okay, I think I'd read topology doesn't need to be done in other software yet. Um, do, you, do you do substance paint in the workshop? I do in one instance. I don't have like specific lessons on it, but I cover it in depth with, uh, it's like a, it was a live stream that I did with Brendan and we covered it in, in depth there. So I, yes, I would say I cover it, but just not, not like the rest of the course is built. Eventually, I want to do that. But that's mainly where I cover it right now. Okay, sorry, one second. Thinking about getting... If you're thinking about realistic stuff, uh, Carlos, then I would definitely be thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, Overton, I do. This is like all, all hanging on me. This is extra large and I'm wearing larges now. Hey, Jimmy, how's it going, man? Dude, every time you hop in here, I'm just like, dang it, I still need to do the thing. 
Oh man. It's going well. It's going well. Just making a, a, a stitch fan art, I guess. What this is. <laughs> so yes, Jimmy, I still need to do that. Oh my goodness. I need, yeah, I, I have so much. I have my fingers in too many pies <laughs> right now. That's what's happening. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So we got that and let's do, let's do these toes. How you been? Oh, thanks so much. So if you guys don't know, uh, Jimmy Levinsky is a phenomenal character modeler. Go check him out on ArtStation and see his stuff. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Another streamer's trying to contact me, and I'm like, I'm right in the middle of the stream. Sorry, Mike. What is AAA assets? AAA assets are... Uh, the they're triple a games they're like the top games you know like like the new cyberpunk that's coming out like witcher red dead you know all the the top tier games they're called triple a games and triple a assets are basically the characters that are used to make those games oh thanks carlos i appreciate it man you're awesome you're awesome carlos is one of my success stories i have to say because um, he, yeah, he, when he first joined the 3d character workshop, he was, he was struggling pretty hardcore and he was almost like, I don't know if this is for me, you know? And, uh, and I'm just like, Carlos, you gotta, you know, uh, just, just focus on, on these smaller things. You're trying to bite too much off in the beginning, you know, focus smaller and just get through these, this stuff. And you remember that Carlos? And, uh, he just he just kept at it and kept pushing through and uh he he ended up winning some of the student challenges so super proud moment there carlos all right this this uh lip to neck transition is kind of interesting but i'm going to leave it like it is okay i'm going to you can also put materials like temp materials on stuff like if i want her eye to be shiny I can add a shiny material just to our eyeball if I wanted to by going to this uh, shaded material and going to toy. Where is it? It's called toy plastic if I can find it. Where is it? Mm, there it is. Toy plastic you can see here. So then I can go to, you want to click on material and then fill object right here. And then go back to uh, skin shade four. And that will fill that single object with that material. Make it kind of kind of highlight right there. It's not as big a highlight as this, but it's got a highlight now. It's kind of cool. Yep, one thing at a time. Yep, yep. Just take baby steps. That's the goal, baby steps. Yeah, because it, a, a lot of students will come into my class, you know, with with big big dreams and big aspirations as far as like, um, and and a lot of times it's because they're big, you know, they're fans of like these anime characters and things like that, which is um, which is awesome. But they they're like, okay, I want to the first thing I want to sculpt is my favorite anime character, and instead of taking baby steps, it's like. For my first song on the guitar, I want to learn, you know, Jimi Hendrix or something. And it's like, no, no, no. You got to learn Mary Had a Little Lamb first, you know, and, 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 then, and then build up to it, you know, get and get there. So, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You remember that, Carlos? Yeah, I guess. How can you forget? <laughs> uh, Frank, not in. Well, there is, but you'd have to go into the material and, and edit the material itself which these for me these are just temporary materials so um i just like to just put them on there to kind of give me uh this is what it's going to look like eventually when i render it 
if that makes sense. Everybody fails at some point. That's right. That's right, Peter. Everybody has to walk through the valley of the suck. I, I have to do that on every single character. There's points on there where it's just going to look like crap. That's all you can do. What are the recommended first baby steps of someone starting? Um, well, getting used to the user interface first. Um, getting used to how, you know, adding geometry. Um, yeah, Jimmy's amazing. So, <laughs> yeah, right? Every single model has to go through the Valley of the Suck. And that, that's, that's a, a term coined by uh, uh, Ryan Kingsland. <laughs> so, um, and then, then the next thing you do, so learn the interface. Learn how to add and remove geometry. Learn how to merge geometry. Learn how to hide and show objects. Learn how to mask objects. And then once you're comfortable in there, that's kind of like learning scales and chords on a guitar. And then once you're comfortable with that, then you can um, start learning songs, okay? Like start building characters. And what I teach in my workshop is how to uh, block out characters with primitive objects. And if you watch any of my streams, that's exactly how I do it is I block out all my characters with primitive, primitive objects. So, um, yeah, you know, that's a, that's an interesting thing, Jimmy, um, that you say that because, you know, I say I worked on Disney infinity and people think it was me designing the characters and me like coming up with this stuff. And I've actually been approached by people saying, Hey, we want to hire you to design our characters. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm the modeler. I'm the guy who modeled the characters. I didn't, I didn't design the characters and it did. It took a small army to, to make Disney infinity. So um, it wasn't just me. It was a whole team of people. Okay, so I'm gonna go Z modeler, extrude, polygroup all, and I'm gonna bring this in. Now this this piece on this nose was left over from last, well, two weeks ago when I was working on this, and I masked this off and I did um, edge loop mass border is what that came from. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of push this in. And see how it kind of leaves this jaggedy, jaggedy edge right here? That's just an extrusion. And uh, I can kind of clean this up by going to, in my menu, it's just called um, Polish by Features. If you crank that up a little bit, you'll see that it kind of polishes that stuff away. Yeah, only, and mostly they're personal projects, right, Jimmy? Like, I'm going to be... I'm going to be modeling this thing that I love. Like, uh, so my, the things, even the stuff that I didn't do on my own, I'm, st I still include somebody like, like all these things you see behind me here. Um, they, I, I either hired or I hired the concept, the design done by my favorite designers or else, um, I asked them if I could model the concept that already existed, like Johannes's pirate girl right there. So all right, I'm going to scale this this down. Now you can kind of see how that goes. And this is like dipping into her head now. How easy is Z Modeler compared to 3D Studio Max? Um, it's a different workflow. And um, it's it, it's not... I mean, you're kind of doing the same thing. You're doing box modeling or traditional modeling, whatever you want to call it. But it's it's a different approach because the tools are slightly different. Um, the programmers at Pixelogic, they think about things a, a bit differently than all of the other uh, products out there. And so, and that's a good thing because it's sometimes it's like, oh, I wouldn't have thought about it like this. And sometimes it makes you a lot faster. And the only, sometimes you'll get frustrated because you're like, hey, this isn't, working how I want it or expect it to work because you're used to working in other programs. Whereas um, if, you're, if you're in here, like you actually have an advantage if you don't know other software because you're coming into ZBrush fresh. You don't have all these other, this baggage from other software going, hey, do it like this because this is the way we taught you, right? Because um, I, I, when I've taught my students, there are, they learn it much quicker if they haven't, or they're not coming from say Maya or something like that, you know? Cause they're like, oh, this is nice. I get this, I understand. 
But if it's like, hey, I want it to work like this. This is the way Maya does it. Well, sometimes you have to figure out other things. <laughs> okay. Hey, what's up, Charlie? Thank you so much. Um, okay, so you can kind of still see some warbles. And I don't know, uh, Jimmy, do you mess with this brush much? There's a smooth brush. It's like this hidden gem Z brush, smooth brush that if you go to uh, Lightbox and then you go to brushes, I, I was, I, I've been meaning to put this on my interface, but uh, and then you go to smooth, the smooth brush folder. If you guys didn't know this, there's a whole bunch of brushes even beyond what's inside when you push the, the, the keyboard letter B that, that shows up. There's all of these other brushes in here that are even beyond what you can do, you know? So I, I suggest you kind of experiment and explore with some of these brushes. There's, there's some awesome ones. But um, if you go into Smooth, there's one called Smooth Directional. And this one is really interesting because it will smooth in the direction. Awesome, yay. Thought, yeah, showed you something, something you didn't know. So what it does, what it does is exactly what you think it would do. And it smooths in, in a direction. It, it actually is the opposite of that. It smooths everything except for the direction you're stroking in, okay? So, so for example, say I want, to, I want to keep this edge right here, but I wanna smooth out the warbles in between. So. If I hold down shift and I just, that's a little too strong, a lot too strong. So I can kind of just uh, stroke down the, the length of that. You can see it, it is kind of relaxing it a little bit, but um, it works a little bit better when the, the mesh is higher density, but you can, it's, it's kind of like a smear. Yeah, it's kind of like a smear, but it's, it will maintain and hold the, the, the ridges, the edges without, you know how a smooth brush will usually just go and destroy your edge, right? It'll just go bleh and it'll just go kind of smooth out. Well, if you, if you stroke in the direction of that edge, it will maintain it while kind of smoothing out the, the rest of the, the peak, not the, not the tip of it. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's toy plastic. It comes with ZBrush. You have it. So you can just find it. Okay. So yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. Okay, so now that we're to this point, let's do some coloring. Well, let's let's do the toes and then we'll do coloring. <laughs> Ashley, hey, how you doing? A cubed in the his house. <laughs> Ach, I like Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, did you know she I know she knows. Do you know about smooth directional? You do, right? Smooth directional. It's a thing I, I remember I used it a while back and then I forgot about it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, there's this smooth directional brush thing. And Jimmy, I have to agree. A cubed, your dog for the beta was amazing. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks, Charlie. You don't use it, no, but but you do know about it. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> these these are the brushes I use right here, but but that one I I kind of want to bring that one up into my user interface because I've been using it more and more because I do a lot of like hard edge work, right? And uh, so I want to I want to use that more. Okay, so there's the toe. I'm gonna make the teeth the toe. That sounds fun. So let's grab that tooth, tooth, and duplicate it. Let's see if this is going to work. It might be too, it might have pushed it too flat. Let's see, that's why. Yeah, maybe that'll work. <laughs> I, 
I, I feel bad because I wish I had a little bit more time in that in the beta. I, I had one freelance job and I'm, I still have it and I'm like, oh man, I gotta gotta balance it out. <laughs> but I did manage to get that one done. I could probably open it up here in a little bit and show you. But that's a lot of fun to play with. The dynamic stuff. A lot of fun. Okay. <clears throat> Oops. <laughs> My wizard. Wizard. What is this? Because I was like thinking, what is this sorcery? You know, the cloth stuff. That was that was the whole idea of it. <clears throat> but I don't know. I don't know if it came across or not. <laughs> I look thinner. I thank you. Um, I yeah. I've been uh, I've been eating better <laughs> because my age is starting to catch up with me, and I, it doesn't let me eat the things I used to. So I'm actually I was I think I've lost almost forty pounds. So yeah, if I take my headphones off, you can really tell here. See. <laughs> You get it. I get it. Thank you. And like I, I've been getting into mountain biking lately. It's a lot of fun. Need your diet? Uh, thank you so much. Um, get me all choked up. It is whole food plant-based. That's all it is. So if you... Um, if you watch Game Changers on Netflix or Forks Over Knives or, you know, just all those food shows that are just like your your typical American diet. It's called the standard American diet. It's sad for short, you know, all the all the meat, dairy and all that stuff that I used to eat forever. Um, it's, it was just kind of catching up with me, so I had to I had to do something different. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was uniform scale. Forty pounds a night. I don't know. I don't know how many kilograms that is. I would like to know. I want to get that little toe, the toe sheath. <laughs> What's the difference between your custom UI in two thousand twenty one versus two thousand nineteen? Uh, not much, honestly. Uh, I added this dynamics menu to the side. So if you already have a custom menu that you like and you've changed or whatever, um, I just I would just suggest to mount this dynamics menu over in this left shelf here. Um, and it works pretty good. So then I I did I did some stuff to this. I got rid of some things. I put some. Um, I added crease and crease all inside of here and the, the crease tolerance and the crease levels just because I kept going over to my menus. The reason I made this shortcut menu is so I wouldn't have to go under the menu so much under the tool side. Okay, so this is like my sh ultimate shortcut because it pops up underneath my pen, you know, um, so I don't have to go digging over here. And that's what that's all about. So anything that I find myself digging for often, I'll consider putting over into my menu. And if I don't access it very much, I'll take it out. Like the, some of the camera stuff, I was never touching. So I pulled that out of there. What do you do to just fill one sub tool with a specific color? Um, basically you just grab, well, this is my hard paintbrush, but you can just turn the Z, the RGB intensity up on any brush and then um, make sure you're selected on RGB, which is color. And then, um, then hit fill object and that fill object is under color, fill object right there. And you can just fill it with whatever color you want. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I want to pose like the reference. <laughs> you gain 40 pounds of the, yeah, right. Yeah, David. So it's pretty close. 18.14 kilograms. Is that what that is? Kilograms. Okay. Let's add some color. Well, I didn't. Man, I'm all over the place today. So I went on a I went on a mountain bike ride this morning with my friend Adam and Noah, and we went up just to a local trail right right pretty close to my house. 
and it's 18 miles, but it's like, if I were to guess, it's about, um, well, it's, it's like half and half. It's, <clears throat> that would be nine miles up, nine miles back. <clears throat> you can do that with materials. Just make sure that you have M checked right here instead of RGB. And if you have both M and RGB selected, it will fill it with both. See what this looks like. I'm kind of running out of geometry to do this with. It's kind of the problem sometimes when we're working with low geometry is you run out unless you're using unless you're using uh, Sculptus Pro or something like that. Oops. All right. Let me try um, this cloth brush. This is this cloth brush is not the cloth brush for 2021. It's different. Which makes me want to kind of rename this one. Cuz this is like a special standard brush almost. I guess you could call it that. Special standard. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Okay, let's color this guy up, girl, and I got to give her the the eyelashes and I'll show you the dynamic thickness which is really cool. Um, let's see, do I miss any? Da, 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 da. How can I find out how to make my own custom menus? Any tutorials? Yes, Overton. I need to do one for the class actually, but um, a good one to, to look for is Ask ZBrush with Joseph Drust. He does a really good job of showing you how to make custom menus and how to alter your user interface to be custom as well. It's really It's really quite simple, honestly. I can show you really quick. Um, so before we color this guy, I'll just take a little, a little side brief side track and we'll customize this menu. So you just go under preferences, go under con config, and then there's this word that says this button that says enable customize. So you turn that on and you'll see the whole UI kind of shift down like this, right? And then, you know, you're in customize mode. Now this, the secret keys to customize is control plus alt. And then what you can do is you can go to any of these menus up top here and drag anything out onto your user interface, or you can drag anything on your user interface off of there and you just kind of drag it and drop it into the canvas and it will go away. Or you can just move stuff around. So if I hold down control plus alt, you can see this delete morph target. I can move it down here and let go. See how it's just kind of moving around. Um, and then I can move these brushes anywhere I want move it here, move it back. And then if I want to grab something off of this menu, like say this camera button, for example, I can grab it and just kind of put it down here and you can see it snaps. It's nice. So now say, okay, my user interface is now edited. I'm done. Let's go back to preferences, turn off, enable customize. And then uh, you can hit store config and it will store that for the next time you open it. Then if you want to save this user interface to share with others, you hit save user interface right here. So that's pretty much it. And just one thing to note, uh, you cannot drag brushes out of this B menu, this brush menu onto your user interface. You have to grab them from the brush pull down right here. That's, that's the only kind of caveat there. <clears throat> so most people use damn standard for what you use the cloth brush. What's the difference? Uh, the, the difference is the fall off. So uh, this, this detail brush that I have here, it started as a damn standard brush and I went in and tweaked it a little bit. Um, so the fall off on this guy here, let me, let me uh, crank up the subdivisions on here. I'm gonna crank it up to about 2.8 million. So now this is high resolution. And if I were to go, you can see the Damien standard has this cut like this. And the cloth brush, my, the cloth brush I have looks like this. See, the fall off is not quite as strong and it's, it's just a softer peak like that. So I wanted a softer peak, not as tight because this is kind of a roll right there over his toe, toe roll. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So now what we can do is come in here and just kind of paint these stripes and paint everything in here. And you can grab this hard paint brush. And if you want, you can get all these brushes from my website for free. 3dcharacterworkshop.com, right on the front page. You have to scroll down a bit, find the big blue label, 
uh, you can enter your email and um, yeah, get these brushes and my user interface and everything for free. Oh, how do you make a, a custom shortcut menu? That's kind of in the same place. I'm not going to get into that one, Overton, because it's a little too uh, deep. But the you there's a area in here. I'm trying to remember where it is. Interface. Yeah, I can't, I can't. It's been a while since I've made one. Um, but yeah, again, watch that. Uh, there's an Ask ZBrush. Ah, I'm stumbling over my words today. There's an Ask ZBrush video that uh, Joseph Drust made that shows you exactly how to make the custom menus. But I'm trying to remember where it is. In, it's in here somewhere. <laughs> and then what I do is I will dock it over to this left shelf while I build it. So I can drag all the stuff in there and there's separators and all sorts of cool stuff. Custom U UI under pref. Okay, thanks, Mark. Or thanks me, sorry. <laughs> okay, anyway, all right, here we go. Let's get this guy colored. Is poly painting the same as painting in Photoshop? Uh, sort of, sort of. So poly painting is like, it's, it's vertex coloring is what it's called. And ver vertices are points in space. They're the little points. I know Mark, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to blow your cover. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway. Um, so, so basically you're, you're coloring the, the points in space. So if you have a low resolution character like this, I, I, I went all the way down in subdivision levels. Okay. So now it's this low and basically I'm coloring the dots. So if I just color one, that's what it looks like, right? It's just one. And if I color its neighbor, that's one more dot. It's coloring. And that's all you get. So whenever you're trying to paint like this, and it just looks like this fuzzy crap, right? And you're just like, I want to get tighter edges. Well, you need to subdivide. You need to have enough geometry, enough points to support the high resolution edges. So I'm going to go up in subdivision levels, actually to 2.8 million. I suggest not going too much higher than 5 million per subtool. That's kind of a good rough estimate here. Now, if I go, you can see it's pretty tight. There's still some edges in here that are loose, but it's 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 much better. See, it's it's much better than it was, right? Um I could subdivide it more. What I usually like to do is I will try and cut my character up into multiple pieces. But since there's not a real logical place to cut this character, since it's a unibody, right? Then I have to subdivide it a little bit higher than I normally would because it's, there's, like I said, there's no place to cut it. So I'm just gonna have to deal with, with this. I can do one more level. If I go one more up, that's 11 million polys. That's kind of, my performance will start to drop. It's not bad. Um, but now it will get a really smooth edge. See that? Super smooth. So if I could, if I could paint smooth, it would be great. But so I'm, I'm going to keep it at 11 and see how we do. But I'm just going to start with this color coming out of her mouth and cutting down like this. And I can turn lazy mouse on, particularly if you have a tablet versus a Cintiq. Okay, if you have a Cintiq, you, I, I typically don't turn lazy mouse on. Or if I do, I make the, the string really short. Okay, and what lazy mouse is, if you guys don't know what lazy mouse is, um, I have it on my user interface. If you push L, you can see it turn on right here. L is the hotkey. Okay, so if it's on right here, and I start to drag, it's kind of like, um, I, I equate it to dragging a rock through sand by a string, right? So if you were trying to draw in sand with a rock and you just had your hand, um, you, could, you couldn't make very big circles because you're limit, limited to your hand arc and that kind of stuff. But if you had it on a string, then you can kind of pull that rock through the sand very far and make these really large, beautiful swirls and curls and stuff like that. So if I turn up the, the lazy radius right here, that's essentially the length of the string. Okay, so if I pull this out, you can see, so the string is longer as I'm dragging it and I can get really good curls with that. 
Okay, but I but I since I'm on a Cintiq, I don't really need to do that, so I'll turn it off. Hey, Lexerup, thank you so much. Appreciate it. So then I'll just come back down in here. And then I'll, I'll probably end it maybe down into the tail a little bit. Like something like that. Whoop. I like to make sound effects when I'm doing this stuff. It helps. <laughs> What's the better medium? Uh, they, they're, they're, uh, they both have their purposes. So I always, I will still do this. I'll paint in my base colors, even if I'm going to take this into substance for finer texturing, because this will give me my base colors. There's actually a, um, what am I trying to say? There's a, it's kind of a clan. They, so substance uses colors as selection sets. So sometimes I will take my characters and I'll color them some really wild wonky colors and then bring them into substance and use those colors for selections, right? Um, so it depends on how familiar you, you are with substances. You know what I'm talking about, but um, so I'll, I will do that, and I will do that with polypaint in here as well. It's a really nice tool to use. Sometimes I'll come back in here and cut the negative out of the color so I can just make it cleaner. Yep, ID color. That's, that's what it's called. Thanks. Okay, let's go around the eye here. Also, one good thing to note, it's not an ID map until you t until you make until you bake it into a map and then it's an ID map. But it's the colors that you can use to make an ID map from, and I'll I will do that with poly paint all the time. Okay, so what I was going to say is, typically you only really have one one good stroke in your arm, and what that means is you have a pivot point which is your elbow, and you have another one which is your wrist, and if you're right-handed. Your, your best arc is like this, right? So it's best to rotate, and that's one thing that ZBrush does really, really well because it has a, uh, oh, what is it called? The, uh, it's like a space ball where you can spin it on all three axes, right? Um, so you can get the model to be exactly where your, your, your best arc is in your natural arm, right? You can just kind of turn it like this. So what I'll usually do is I'll go past, yeah, trackball, thanks. So what I'll usually do is I'll go past, like if I need to make a point with my paint, I will go past that point. And do I do game characters as well? Yes, I do. Well, I did. I'm, I've, I've been, now I teach how to make game characters. Um, but yeah, I worked for Disney for 10 years. Disney Interactive. Okay, I'm going to turn it back here because I want to have the stroke in my arm be here. Poly groups are color IDs too. No, they're not, but you can turn them into color IDs. You can you can say you can say okay, make my poly groups, take them, turn them into IDs, and that will work too. Yeah, so these Disney Infinity characters you see behind me, I did a handful of those, like uh, I guess one one fifth of them for the. It's kind of my my thing. <laughs> there we go. And what I'll what I usually do to get a nice uh, curve is I'll start off off of it off of the model. I won't start right in like I just did there. I'll start out into like the red and bring it in. Hey, what's up, Ian? It's going well, my friend. How's it going? I need to get this a little bit. I didn't want to saw that much off. 
There we go. You're learning to make high and low. That's what it takes to make game characters. I don't know what I did with my nose. Okay. Looks like this side is all jacked up. I don't think I had symmetry turned on. Oh, thanks so much. Okay, so let's uh, mirror and weld that. There we go. I don't know why. There we go. Hey, what's up, Steven? Wouldn't the lazy mouse help you better for the curve? Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I'll, I'll turn it on sometimes, but with the Cintiq, your, your pen is so one-to-one -one that sometimes I don't like to have it on. I'll turn it off. Sometimes I'll turn it on. It just depends on if I can get what I need or not. All right, speaking of nose, I don't... Let me see. I'm, I'm going to re... I'm going to retopologize this nose because I want to get... Like, I was thinking about painting this nose, but if I paint along this edge border of this, it's going to look like this. It's going to have this fade going from here up, and I, I want a, a tighter line right there. What model that you created is your favorite? Um, probably the pirate girl back here. So, um, and I did that during the a live stream here on Pixel Logic. Well, several, several weeks of live streaming. <laughs> How'd you fix the symmetry issue? I did a weird, uh, a weld, a mirror and weld right here. Mirror and weld. And it just takes anything on the left and mirrors it to the right. All right. So, um, how do you just do that? Grab the other colors or something. Some, <clears throat> yes, it's the letter C. So C on your keyboard is like a color picker. So you can color pick this or this or this. Yeah. So I can grab, I don't know. I have a, I have, I have a bunch that I like, but I still like this one quite a bit. I, just because I like the design from Johannes. But let me grab it. Oh man, my legs are feeling it. Oh, goodness. Okay, so here, let me hide this stuff so I can see what I'm doing. So let me move this. So now I have my 4K camera. You guys can actually see this. So you can see. Yeah, this was printed by Form Labs. But um, this is a Johannes design. Yeah, Johannes is fantastic. So you should go check him out on, on ArtStation. But yeah, so productive. I'm, I'm jealous of his, his work ethic is crazy. <laughs> but um, I, I was able to commission him to do a new one. And I'm hoping to start that one on, uh, for, the, for my students soon. Yeah, I'm, I have some, have some new things that I'm working on and I'd like to do, but thank you so much. How many pieces? Uh, hundreds. <laughs> I think it's in the hundreds. Okay, what are we at? 114. Okay. I got to keep track of time. So I'm going to duplicate this off. Boom, boom, boom. Hide the original. Um, UI studios, I have not had any issues. Um, that's interesting. Maybe if you could, yes, I will create the eyelashes here shortly. Um, what, let's see. So I would reach out to, um, uh, Pixlogic support at pixelogic.com and let them know what issues you're having. Can you spoil the new things for students? I wish I could, but. It's all I can say is it's a Johannes design, but, and that's all, that's all I should say. That's all I need to say. Right. And it's a phenomenal Johannes design, but, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get started on that. You're having a screen grab shift S is not working. It just worked for me. That's weird. Printed as one piece. Oh, the pieces. No, um, I see what you're asking. So 
it was probably let's see one two three four six probably eight 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 or nine pieces i would say hey daniel how do you upgrade to 2021 uh you go to um i'm trying to remember you because i i did mine from the licensing page uh, i just downloaded it directly from pixel logic and you log in go to my licenses and you pick your operating system and then you can download it right there that's what that's how i did it and it worked out great what's so nice about it is you don't need to upgrade your license you know how um in the days of old you would have to like send your uh your number into pixel logic and they would reply with your the number you would have to p put in there but ever since i think 2021 or 2019 I, i'm trying to remember but um it just upgrades it now when you download it and yeah it works really well so that's what i would do if i were to upgrade it okay so let me uh z remesh this and i'm going to keep groups let's see <clears throat> keep groups and z remeshing is a wonderful thing I'm gonna turn this down to four though. There we go, check that out, so nice. How can we get basic shape of 3D model? Um, again, Said, I'm, I apologize, I don't understand what exactly it is you're asking me. Are you trying to, are you trying to ask me like how, how do I get the shapes? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I, like I said, I'm, I apologize for that. But usually, I'm going to fill this with a color and then subdivide. Okay. This is already pretty high as far as subdivision levels. But now you'll notice one thing, and I love this, is after I've Z remeshed it, it kind of gets rid of those um, hard edges and makes these really nice beveled edges for this nose and i like that better it's not so super crispy and unnatural um she's a fan art from lilo and stitch let me put the the the, the link to the artist there that's just someone who made fan art of this and then i thought it was really cool so i decided to model it yeah but that, that person has a whole bunch of Stitch fan art, which is really cool. Okay. So for this, um, for this eyelash, how'd I get the eyes? Yeah, I, I assigned toy, toy, uh, what's it called? Toy shiny. What is it called? Toy plastic right there. I assigned this material just to the eye and it did that. So, Okay. So I'm going to make the eyelash really quick and show you the, the dynamic with thickness is really cool. Said knows how to sculpt well. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah, Thomas Whittleback. That's great. So um, just I'll try and answer your question, Said. Um, and you, you've seen me, probably you've seen me model before, but how I try and get my base models to to match the concept is I will block out my characters with primitive shapes. That's kind of uh, the workflow I've used for the last four or five years. Um, so that's what I suggest everybody starting out with basic primitive shapes and blocking in, getting the proportions and everything first before getting into the detail and stuff like that. So hopefully that answers your question. Hey, what's up, Sean? How you doing, man? Okay. So since this body now has, well, there goes my nose. Somebody got your nose. All right, so since this body has uh, subdivision levels, I can't use the topology brush to draw on top of it. So I have to duplicate it temporarily, and that's gonna duplicate 11 million polys, which is crazy. Um, but I'm going to go down in subdivision levels because I don't need that many. Okay, I'm going to solo this. This one. Okay, so I'm going to go up 
high enough that I just have enough surface to draw on, but low enough that it's not 11 million polys. Okay, and I, I'll delete the upper, delete the lower, and this is what I have now. Ignore the color. Working on something nice. Um, I'm working on this and then some stuff I can't talk about. <laughs> um, I always seem to have trouble with the heads and applying it from the concept. Any good tips? I've learned a lot from your streams, by the way. Oh, thank you so much, Ryan. Um, so the biggest tip that I can give as far as trying to get the heads right, <clears throat> and it's a big mistake that a lot of beginners do, and it is trying to find images that give you the front and the side views of a character, okay, that a concept artist has done. Uh, it's really nice, and it's nice to kind of have that blueprint, but it's also a mistake as far as um, you you don't have all the information there. You think you do because you have, hey, I got a front, I got a side, but what happens is you're missing that three-quarter view, and, and that's like, to me, that's the most important view that you need is like like my head right now. You can see my the shape of my cheek and my chin and my nose and how deep the eyes are and all that kind of stuff. You should get all of that information from just a three quarter view of a character, just like the one I'm looking at here. Um, so I, yeah, I would, that's, that's kind of my advice is stay away from either straight on or straight from the side concepts. Um, look for a three quarter view and then that should give you all the information you need. And then it just takes practice after that practice, practice, practice. And trying to hit hit the proportions in the block out mode before you move forward into more detail. So, okay, what was I doing? Getting sidetracked here. Oh yeah, eyelashes. Okay. Let's draw these eyelashes in. Now I could do the extrude edge method, um, but for this, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to draw this eyelash on with the method that I usually use, but I am going to show dynamic thickness. So this is just the drawing the topology brush on. And you can do, you can use the new topology brush for this, the new edge extrude, but I don't want to, I don't want to mess it up. So, cause I'm not practiced at it enough <laughs> to do, to demo it during my stream. So, okay, so there we go. And I'm gonna make this a single-sided edge just by turning my draw size down to one and tapping on the surface like that. Um, and then I'm going to, let's see. Do split map split unmasked points. There we go. And now I can delete this because I'm done with it. And I don't want to I don't want to keep it around because it's so high poly. Okay. Um <clears throat> let's see, what did I miss? Uh what kind of characters do you suggest to start with? Human famous cartoons? Uh no, just find something you're passionate about and something that looks fairly simple. Um, sometimes you can't always pick something that's fairly simple because you don't know any better yet. So just just something, you know, something, um, something fairly simple to start with. I don't know if I would jump right to a human face. Maybe some cartoon. Maybe something like this. Thanks, Andy. Overton. Uh, yeah, I'm probably not gonna rig these fingers, but probably with just a single bone if I were to do it. I'm going to turn on double and I'm just going to, oops, grab mask. <laughs> it was funny that you said, said that over time. I picture you going, did you ever think about that? Huh? Huh? <laughs> How's anybody going to rig that? Huh? And throwing your arms up. <laughs> Let's turn on double. Do I review portfolios? Uh, I do for my students occasionally but I don't have time to review them during a live stream. I'm, I apologize for that, but. <clears throat> I 
I should do like I know Thomas does that. Tom or T. S. Whittleback. He he'll do portfolio reviews occasionally. He streams later tonight. Um, maybe I should do like a portfolio review stream. That might be kind of fun. What tablet do you use? I'm on a 27 inch Cintiq. Um, and I I always have to say, you don't need a Cintiq to do sculpting, especially starting out. Please don't get one when you're starting out, because um, it's it's a really really big investment if you're just wanting to try something out. So I suggest getting a tablet of some sort, any kind, any any kind of tablet. Okay. You let it extrude in the new. Yeah, I just need to practice it some more. Yeah, I'm wearing I'm wearing my Wacom hat, by the way. I'm yeah, those those are my favorite tablets by far. But my my advice is to get what you can afford starting out. You don't need a Cintiq. You don't need anything crazy expensive. You just need something with pressure sensitivity. That's it. Yeah, sure. It's 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 absolutely nice to have, but you know, I'm just I'm just trying to tell people they don't they don't have to have they don't have to go into debt to just have a Cintiq. You know, it's not it's not that big of a you know necessity but it's super nice don't get me wrong it's super nice okay um i'm gonna cut this in and adjust this a little bit yeah ts whittleback is fantastic i always i'm sad that i'm not gonna be able to hang out with him this year because um I don't know that they're going to be doing a ZBrush Summit this year live, which is my it's my Christmas time. I love going to ZBrush Summit. So hopefully next year, or they'll have one online, something. But uh, TS Whittleback, he's all he's aws awesome to hang out with. He's a really cool guy. Okay, so now that I have this, this is awesome. I can turn on dynamic right which is still just a single-sided uh, surface but now if I go over to geometry and go into uh, the dynamic subdivisions you'll see this it has this thickness and I can crank this thickness up and you'll see it adds thickness it's super cool because and the reason it's cool is because it's non-destructive it's still a single-sided polygon single-sided edge and it is it is amazing I I don't know if they're going to do an online version of the summit. Honestly, um, I haven't heard, but I'm just guessing they won't have a in-person one, you know, um, just because nobody, you know, nobody else is doing it. So I don't know that they would, it would be cool if they did, but I don't know if I would be able to go. Um, anyway, so this is a, this is a non-destructive workflow, which is phenomenal. I love, I love this. So what's cool about it too, is you can maintain or not maintain your, uh, your creased edges. Okay. You can see how this has creased edges, but maybe I want these softer instead of having these really super hard edges, right? Um, maybe I want it to be smooth and all you have to do is this button called post subdiv thickness. You turn that off. Hold on a second. Where is it? I don't want to apply it. Maybe my edges are creased right now. Let me uncrease them. There we go. Okay. That's it. That's the difference. Okay. So you have to have cre no creases on your, on your edges. So when I, just by default, when you draw with the topology brush, it will automatically crease them. But if I turn off this post subdiv button, Basically, it's going to do the uh, creasing posts after the subdivision surfaces, or it's going to do the dynamic after the subdivision surfaces. That's why you're getting the smooth stuff. But if I turn it on, it will give me the hard edge stuff. 
So you can easily flip between the two without having to go in there and, and physically saying, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it this way now or not. Okay, so if that makes sense, really super powerful. Um, what's the difference between dynamic subdivision and subdivision? Um, dynamic is a preview where subdivision is real. So dynamic is, uh, it'll give you a preview of three levels of subdivision without actually subdividing it. So like this, uh, like this eyelash, for example, if I turn dynamic subdivision off, it's still just a single sided edge, right? It's still just that. So if I hit, if I turn it back on, it'll give me a preview of what it's going to look like with thickness and with subdivision levels on there, which I'm still editing the low resolution geometry. <clears throat> super powerful, super powerful. I love it because now I can go through and I can just keep this uh, thin and editable. It's very editable, which is nice. That was probably my favorite part. Well, besides the claw stuff, it's my favorite addition that they added to the, to 2021. All right, so let me get just get this tied in there. Um, with the new cloth simulation, could I have simulated, say, the noodles I did on my Shaolin Monk? Or would noodles fold in on themselves? They would pro So uh, there's some settings that you can play with with the cloth stuff that are uh, really interesting as far as like trying to get it not to fold in on itself because it will respect gravity but you can turn gravity into different directions. You can also expand it or contract it. So uh, you can add just a little bit. It doesn't work like fiber mesh does where, with the gravity like that. It does a little bit, but not as much. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it does have self collision and it does have, man, I'm, I'm losing my voice. Hold on one second. <clears throat> And it also has, um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Self-collision. And you can store a morph target. And when you store a morph target, it tries to maintain its shape as you do the, the, the simulation. So that's, that's two things you can do. <clears throat> okay, there we go. So now we got the toes, we got the eyelashes, and let me just get finished coloring her, and then we should get to posing after that. Does freeze subdivisions just temporarily delete higher and low? Yes, it does, but it also, it will rebuild it. It won't necessarily, I think, I think freeze is a little bit of a, I, I hardly ever use it because sometimes it will accidentally get rid of something I want to keep because it will essentially re -Z remesh the lowest subdivision level and then subdivide everything up to what you had it and then reproject the old onto the new and sometimes it will uh, have issues so just keep that in mind I, I like it a lot but sometimes it can be tricky let me get this edge smoother I'm actually going to subdivide it up one more time And then, yeah, I can show you, I can show you one thing that Pablo showed me with, with the cloth. Pablo is another streamer on here. He was, he was, he got, he dug in pretty deep and was finding some really cool stuff. I think I'll stick with that. Oh, really? Okay, I'm gonna fill this, see what I get. So you can you also use your poly groups as selection sets. Like so. <laughs> I, I appreciate the Grand Master thing, but yeah, I'm, I, I feel like I'm far from it. <laughs> <clears throat> How can we learn side view sculpt? 
Um, practice. That's as a beginner, I suggest not not using a concept that just has the side view because you don't have all the other information. But the more you sculpt, the more practice you'll get and the more you can understand what it should look like from the front and all other angles. But when you don't have that information, it's kind of difficult to come up with it on your own. And that just comes with practice for sure. Okay, so I'm going to, oops. I'm just going to smooth this ear out a bit. Uh, how can I make a brush collection like your insert multi mesh? Um, there is, there is another um, an Ask ZBrush video, I believe that. Um, that Joseph just made that shows you how to make an IMM brush. But essentially you gather all the primitive objects. I made all these primitive objects and you put each object in its own subtool uh, and you have them all centered in the world on zero, zero. And then you go to, um, when you're all done, you have to snap your camera. I believe it's to the top or I can't remember. I think it's from the top. And then you go uh, create insert multi mesh right here. That's, and then that will that will make a brush from all of your parts and pieces. But there's an Ask ZBrush. So do Ask ZBrush IMM and you should be able to find it. Okay. So I'm just going to mask this off about here. Fill this. Yeah, I guess it kind of does look like a rabbit's character, doesn't it? And then maybe like that. Not the crispiest. Maybe I should have tightened up that mask. Um, if you don't use free subdivisions, how can you mirror something without having to delete lower subdivisions? That's a great question. What I'll usually use is, first of all, I won't. Um, I'll try not to mirror when I have actual subdivision levels. I will use uh, mirror and weld. Mirror and weld does not work with subdivision levels. So that's the first way. The second way is by using a Z plugin called Subtool Master, and there's a mirror in there. And that mirror will work with subdivision levels. So you can use that. Okay. So is this not... Oh, I wasn't subdivided, okay. I wasn't subdivided enough all the way up to the highest resolution. So let me grab my mask pen. Do this again. That's a super crispy mask. So let's blur it a little bit. That's better. Okay. Will this stream be available for replay on the forum? No, Overton, this will be, this is Pixelogic's live stream. So this will be available on Pixelogic's YouTube channel uh, after it's usually, they usually get it up pretty, pretty soon. But okay, let's just paint these bits on her back. And what I think I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna do a, this will be interesting. I'm going to try a mask circle. Yeah, I'd love to have you in there. Join us. <laughs> okay, so BM is for the masking stuff. And there's this mask circle. It works pretty good. It looks like this. 
So I'm going to turn. Let me see. I wish I could rotate the mask. I don't think I can. I'm just going to have to use mask lasso. <laughs> hey, what's up, Art of Ortega? How you doing? <clears throat> that 4K webcam. Yeah, I got it going. So what does the course include? Um, <clears throat> my goodness, a whole, a whole bunch of stuff, but as a, as a small kind of pitch, I guess I could say it includes a workflow for a game character from start to finish and a toy from start to finish. So I basically take you through how to make a high resolution character and then how to Retopologize, put UVs, bake the maps, um, make a game character out of it, how to render it in Keyshot, Marmoset, how to 3D print it, how to do keys. Um, yeah, a, a whole bunch of stuff. Can't we orbit the view? Yeah, you can orbit the view. <clears throat> Comics legend. Uh, you know, I've kind of been threatening the price going up for quite a while, and I, I just can't. I haven't been able to do it yet because there's a lot of people that are still, you know, they don't, they don't have all the money in the world. So <clears throat> I, even though I've more than doubled the content since I first launched my course three years ago and I haven't raised the price, um, what's, where did that go? Yeah, I've been debating it a lot, but. I'm working on some new stuff too that I'm 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 trying to decide how that's all going to work out. So I know this one goes up and over her arm, but it doesn't make sense in 3D, so I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> yeah, there's a fantastic forum, a great community. A lot of my students come hang out with us here <clears throat> every week which is fantastic. Thanks guys for, for joining me. Uh, no, no. If you do the two payment plan, you get access to everything right up front. I don't, I'm, I, I don't do that to you. <laughs> How often do you save your project? Um, well, when I'm not distracted, usually about every 15 minutes. And I also have uh, auto save turned on too, every 15 minutes. But that reminds me, I should go save it. And I save a ZTL, I don't save a project. Just because projects can get quite large. Uh, the course goes from complete beginner to some advanced topics. So, but basically it's for beginner to intermediate. And then, yeah, there's some advanced stuff in there as well. And it's lifetime access, so you can make as many characters as you want. Okay, so if you want to see, I can give you a preview. I can give you a preview of the forum at least. See it, it's popping up here. And I also have a, I have a top row that's uh these are this is all student work none of this stuff is mine um you can see student work all the way down through here and this one is is done from my mini bust head course so and i do q and a's every other friday you can come and ask me questions uh yeah it's a really really awesome community All right, and then I can kind of show you a little bit of what the, this is what the course looks like when you're in there. So um, you can see it has a whole bunch of stuff on the left-hand side. These are all the lessons right here. There's even, there's student provided lessons. Like students are passionate enough that they'll be like, hey, I, I learned this thing, I wanna teach it. So I put it here. And then there's a student only live stream that I had for a while. 
and you have access to that and that is like 60 hours of content and i go through the same thing again which is like retopology uvs and all that kind of stuff so very cool anyway yeah if you're interested in joining yep 3dcharacterworkshop.com okay um So yeah, I would I, sh I should probably be tar charging double about now. <laughs> so, but I'm not. Okay, so let's get this. Let's get her posed. Now I can see that her head is a little too small. <clears throat> I almost did. What's it gonna take? <laughs> okay, let me clean this up. this yep got an extra nose in there okay and I sometimes I just like to rename some of this stuff lashes tongue And what's this? Teeth. Teeth. All right. There we go. Should be good. Let's name this back to nose, not nose one. And then we'll save it again. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Uh, what courses would you recommend to a beginner who wants to get into character work as well as realistic characters? Um, so, well, I recommend my course, of course, but that's, that's, I'm, I'm biased, <laughs> but as far as realistic characters, um, there are a whole bunch out there. Um, like mold 3d has some, uh, Noman has some, um, and usually it's, it's a lot of people will start with my course and get into stylized characters and then work their way into realistic characters after that, like take another class. Because then you have the basics. Yep, lifetime access. One-time payment. Lifetime of the course, not my lifetime. So lifetime of the course. So if I ever if I ever change it eventually, but it's been going for three years so far. So okay, let's get to posing this this thing. All right. Can you record in ZBrush? I mean to show our process, you can. Um, so if you go under movie right here, you can do either, uh, a, you can hit record, which will record every single step you make, or there's a turntable, there's a snapshot and a time-lapse. And a time-lapse will record everything you're doing in a sequence, uh, like every five frames or something like that. It'll do a time-lapse. Then you can also record history. There's a lot of cool things you can do, so. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's pose this. So I'm gonna go to uh, T-Pose Mesh. <clears throat> Thanks you guys. I appreciate it so much. Make me happy. <laughs> <clears throat> Makes it all worth it. Okay, so let's do some do some posing here I do want to make her head larger and you can adjust proportions while you're posing there's nothing wrong with that <clears throat> so a little bit bigger on the head did I already save it I did Okay. Character's looking cool. Thanks. <clears throat> Man, my, my throat is crazy today. Okay, so let's just start bending these down. Hey, Shaswada, how you doing? Okay, and then I'm going to show you the, the handy-dandy bendy trick that everybody likes to see. 
So if I turn off gizmo right here, it will change it to a uh, transpose line. And I can take this transpose line and, and kind of draw it along the length of the thing that I want to bend. And then as long as I have W selected, which is move. All right, Sean, take care, man. Um, you can hold down Alt, click on this yellow circle and bend it like this. So I can put a bend in that. And then, of course, we need to come back and fix what we've bent. Let's see. Turn symmetry on for a moment. And then we can smooth these ears out. Do some... Uh, someday make a stream preparing the model for rigging. Um, I have that whole thing in my course. And since I don't do that in... ZBrush, I I stream on the Pixelogix live stream, and this is ZBrush's live stream. Um, and since I don't do my prepping for rigging in ZBrush, I probably won't ever show that on a on a live stream. But I do cover that entire process in my course. So I guess that's a sad answer to your question. I apologize, <laughs> but okay. Will the transpose line work for fabric? I believe so, yeah. Uh, do I also do animating? I do. I was an animator professionally for about five years. I've worked for Sony and uh, Acclaim and different companies like that. I was an animator for Sony. Oh, Overton, you taking off? See you, man. Oh, no. You're saying peace out to Sean. Yes. Overton's staying. Sean is going. <laughs> Got it. Okay, I want to do it again with this tail. Um, um, is there a reason why you, you don't use the joint type thingies to pose your character? I assume you're talking about um, the Z sphere rigging. Um, and the reason I don't use Z-Sphere rigging is because it's, uh, it's, not, it's not customizable enough. Like, I can't adjust the exact falloff. In, in, say, Maya terms, it would be called weight painting. I can't adjust the weight painting enough. So it destroys my model a little more than I would like it to. That's why I don't use it. Okay, I'm going to have this curling off one direction. Uh, do you think your course would be worth it for a seasoned modeler? Uh, it depends on what you're trying to, to go after. Um, I do have several seasoned modelers that started with my course and um, have excelled. They learn different tips and they also get you know, get some feedback and stuff on their on their models, depending on exactly what they're looking for. Um, so it just depends. I mean, the the thing is, there's a there's a 14 day money back guarantee. You can hop in there and see what it's all about. And if you don't like it, you know, you can just say, hey, it's not it's not for me, you know, and I'll just give you a a, a refund for it. Which I'm proud to say I don't really have to do too many refunds. And most mostly it's uh due to people just kind of getting getting antsy and, and buying it before realizing they had rent due or something like that. And they're like, um, I bought this and I shouldn't have. So can I come back when I have more money? Sure. And they do. So that's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna this a little bit this way okay let's see let's just kind of turn the head a little 
And this is about the time when I turn perspective on. Everybody wants to know why I don't work in perspective or when do I turn it on. This is about when I turn it on. <laughs> I wish there was a magic button. I honestly do. And I wish I knew where it was. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. What is going on? Are you trying to call me? Don't call me right now. Okay. So her arms are higher than I would like them to be. Let's see if I can nudge them down. Without breaking the model. Have I had a chance to play with the cloth stuff? Yes, I have. Um, so I was on the beta of it, fortunately. And um, they, let's see. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Okay, so this is what I made for the beta. So I did, I used some, some cloth stuff, cloth stuff, right, for these and to get this to work. And uh, yeah, it was, it was super cool. Um, and then like all these sprinkles and everything that is, uh, Hey, take care Ian. That was also done with the dynamic stuff. So you don't just have to do cloth with it. You can do other things as well. And this was like, uh, like micro mesh exploded with the dynamic stuff. So that yeah, was a lot of fun. I love how it contacted the, the feet and, you know, around the belt and all that kind of stuff. It was really fun. Thanks. Which state does your mesh have to be to start posing? Um, everything in place. So all the pieces and parts in place. <clears throat> And then I usually have every subtool try and have subdivision levels. <clears throat> I kind of, in my course, I have a, a prep for posing checklist. So you kind of get everything at the, the, the right density as well. And this BT album is fantastic, I just have to say. I'm listening to, to BT's new album. It's like a kind of dance music, but it's ambient dance music. So I'm gonna do this here. Sorry, I gotta focus for a second. What's up, game animation? Welcome. Okay, now I gotta fix the mess I made. I gotta drop this elbow. we got oh we're almost done here I am doing well thanks this is a kind of a weird pose with this hand it's kind of a bent wrist
Try down tempo music. It will change your life with music. <laughs> are you talking about down tempo, like um, like offbeat? Like, are you talking about slower music? Usually, when I sculpt, I listen to uh, soundtracks, like movie soundtracks. I know it looks like there's a purse to be there. That arm is so much shorter. Let me just kind of squinch it up there. Okay, let's see. A little better, a little closer. This one's all jacked up. Oh. Okay, maybe something like that. These these fingers are so funny. They're like webby. Like that list you put on Spotify. Which one? Oh, the music to sculpt to. Alter Records. Okay, I'll check that out. All right. Well, this pose, it's, I mean, it's kind of easy, quote unquote, but it's, it's really not. It's going to take me a while. So I'm going to have to finish this off stream, but I'll, I'll just kind of keep doing what I'm doing until I'm done. So <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to thank everybody for coming and hanging out with me today. Another fabulous Monday stream. And if you haven't yet, please go grab Z, the latest ZBrush update 2021. Start playing with that cloth, playing with the dynamics, uh, all that stuff. It's really fun. Play with that uh, dynamic thickness. Super fun. And the uh, extrude edge. And one thing you can do is try saving your file out as a PNG file, like an image file, because now it will actually save your model in an image. It's crazy. Crazy witchcraft, but awesome. So, yep, thanks everybody. I will finish posing this and post it up. I gotta put her legs in these positions and her other arm coming around there like that. And I, I gotta make her ears kind of have gravity and stuff like that, so. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks again and take care, have a wonderful week and we'll catch you next Monday. And as always, you can download my free brushes user interface and ruler file over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Just go over there and scroll down until you see the, the blue badge banner thing. <clears throat> Enter your name and email and you'll get these uh, brushes. So, all right, fantastic. Thanks everybody. Happy sculpting. See you next Monday. Cheers.